Hi, I'm Elisa Lichtenbaum and this is Ticket Booth 13. The year is 1595. Two playwrights are desperate to write a hit play, but find themselves constantly overshadowed by a Renaissance rock star named William Shakespeare. When they learn that the next big thing in showbiz will be something called a musical, they set out to write, you guessed it, the world's first musical. That's the story of Something Rotten, a brand new, outrageously funny Broadway musical that begins performances March 23rd at the St. James Theater. I am beyond thrilled to have with me today Casey Nicola, the director and choreographer of this outrageously funny show, along with two of the show's outrageously funny stars, Brian Darcy James and Kristen Borrell. Please join me in giving them a fabulous and grand Shakespearean welcome. So thank you for being here today. Very, very excited to meet you all and hear about the show. So let's start with Casey. Okay. Casey, you've done, you've directed and choreographed Aladdin, The Drowsy Chaperone, Spam a lot, the list goes on and on. Elf, let's not forget Elf. You clearly are the go to director and choreographer for musical comedies. How did you find your way to something rotten? Well, uh, Kevin McCollum, the producer, said uh, he has friends that wrote it. He'd been friends with Carrie Kirkpatrick and Wayne, his brother Wayne Kirkpatrick for years, and uh, said, you, have to need to meet, you need to meet these guys because they have written something I think it's right up your alley. And I met with them and they sort of pitched it to me. They had two songs written, they had a couple scenes written, and the scenes made me laugh out loud. I loved the music and here we are three and a half years later. Wonderful. And you're sitting here with two wonderful cast members, part of a very <laughs> hilarious cast. Um, how, tell me about your characters. Who, um, Christian and Brian, what are the characters that you play? Who are the characters? I, I play Nick Bottom, uh, who is uh, one half of a brother combination, much like our writers, Wayne and Carrie Kirkpatrick. Uh, John Cariani plays my brother, Nigel Bottom, I'm Nick Bottom, and we're trying to uh, be successful in the theater. We have our own little troupe, mm -hmm. uh, as Shakespeare calls, our sad little troupe, <laughs> but, oh. but we're not, we're struggling. Oh, we're str str we're, <laughs> <all lines. laughs> yeah. we're in competition with this guy, and it's hard because he, he tends to burn brightly, this William Shakespeare. And that's another thing I hate about Shakespeare. All the twits who blow me in about Shakespeare and how they prattle on about his great accomplishments and la di da di da. And, and so that is uh, the, the kind of uh, innate competition it begins with me trying to uh, get out beneath his shadow, which is very long and dark ah. indeed. Ah, oh, well, that would be a lovely mm, segue great, for, great for comedy. comedy. Right, right exactly. Long and dark shadows. <laughs> long and dark shadows. Just like dark shadows. <laughs> Right, exactly like it. <laughs> Wonderful. So you're in the shadow, and so, Christian, tell us about Shakespeare. You're I, I, Shakespeare. I get to play William Shakespeare, but it's Shakespeare uh, just as Romeo and Juliet has opened, and that's his latest, greatest hit. And uh, we're playing Shakespeare. He, as written, he's, he's basically the rock star of that time, and he has uh, a raging ego and uh, a very, very healthy sense of himself. And yeah, I think he loves uh, rubbing Nick's nose in, in his great success. Well, and I also I saw some video footage, but I did see some gyrations, so I'm thinking there's a little Elvis in your Shakespeare, too. That's, that's what I'm picking up on. I could, <laughs> I could be wrong. Don't, this is not going to No, no, it's, it's true. There's some Elvis, there's, there's some Prince, there's uh, some Mick Jagger, and, and just a soupçon of Britney Spears. Ah, <laughs> I thought you were going to say a soupçon of Judy Garland. I was happy. It's not Wait, too late. Newman's, it's not too late. Rehearsal, the, the show's Judy. not frozen. Yes, the yes, show's yes. not frozen. No, yes. <laughs> well, speaking of Shakespeare, did you have to brush up on your Shakespeare to prep for this play? What's really fun about what these guys have written is that they make Shakespeare incredibly accessible. And there's also, there's plenty of room in this show for people who don't appreciate or love Shakespeare. Um, and I think there might even be a hint of uh, the idea that Shakespeare might be a bit of a fraud. Mm -hmm. just, a, just a hint. And so my, my research has been really, yeah, more about the hips than about the words. <laughs> I like and that. And thank you for like being that. so patient about that because <laughs> that one hip is a little Ooh. dodgy. Yeah. Tony Award for best hips in a musical. <laughs> Clearly, I see you heard it here first, kids. <laughs> so, we obviously have a hilarious director, two hilarious stars, part of a larger hilarious cast that includes Brad Asker, who did The Producers, Peter Bartlett, who just did Cinderella, who has done a number of Paul Rudnick plays. The dear, dear John Cariani, who plays Nigel Absolutely. Bottom, yes, who yes, is okay. just the sweetest, most naturally funny person. And he's got a heart of gold. So he, he yeah. is also, I think, one of the comic anchors. Well, given yeah, and one of the heart anchors of the show, too, mm -hmm. you know, which is really awesome. Yeah, what is the difference between the two brothers? You actually just brought up a really good point. What is... Well, the way, the way that John describes him, I think, very, very, uh, uh, very well is that, that um, 
Nigel Bottom is interested in writing from the heart. He is he's following uh, the things that are that, that are dear to him and that, that are organic to him. Whereas I'm more inclined to want to write for the audience to make to make some money and to make a hit. So there is some there is some kind of contrast between our approaches in writing. And he he you know we, we do share we do share a love for the theater and a desire to succeed, but we have different philosophies as to how to do that. Well, there's your problem. You're so blinded by the bar. You're such a pompous little man. Why is it a problem to admit that I'm a fan and I could never hate Shakespeare? So what is the most hilarious, crazy, insane thing that has happened in rehearsals with this outrageously funny cast? Rehearsing for this outrageously funny <laughs> it just, cast? It never ends, honestly. It's like, it's like eight stand-up shows at a time, if, if not more. I mean, it's really, it's so much fun. It's, it's been a, the collaboration process has been a joy and just what everyone's contributing and it's so much fun to create something brand new when you have such a cast that just gives you so much and comes up with so many fun ideas and they say okay this might be really stupid or really weird but what about this and I go yeah let's do it <laughs> but it's really good and what I, what I love about the cast too is they're everyone's very grounded and honest in addition to being funny so it's not just slapstick for no reason it's, it's part of the storytelling and it's part of you know the homage to musicals and what I love about musicals which is uh, sort of a heightened honesty which makes it okay to sing and to do a musical basically. Right. Well actually I just remembered from hearing you talk about this that you and not many people will know this that you actually started off as a performer as a right. dancer you were in Thoroughly Modern Millie. Thoroughly Modern Millie was my last one. You. Crazy View was my first one. So how does how does your background as a performer influence your approach to directing? Um, you know, I just feel like I understand what everyone's going through a little bit more. And also, because I've been there innately, I think things feel wrong to me more quickly, actually. Mm -hmm. Or they feel like they're not honest. Or I would think as an actor, I wouldn't be able to jump to that next beat right. from where that was. So I can talk to the writers and say, it just feels like that would be a hard thing for them to get from this moment to that moment. He's also so wonderfully patient with everybody's different process. I'm so glad we get to talk about process finally. <laughs> but you know, every actor is different. We're like snowflakes, I want to say. But <laughs> it's because he was there, he knows that everybody has a different way of working and so he's incredibly patient with everybody and uh, it brings out everyone's uh, confidence and uh, it's just wonderful. It's a great room that he's created and he also hires and works with kind, generous people. So the room is not only hilarious, but we're all there and supporting each other. Yeah, and it's because it's, of him. Oh, that's nice. Setting the tone. Yeah. That's true. Nice, thank you. What do you think is the secret of, I think doing over the top comedy, really broad comedy, really big Timing. comedy. Ta I was just gonna say, uh, you, you, you know what the question was. I was like, what's the secret? What's the secret? I thought it would be honesty. No. <laughs> Honest what, what timing. So Honest timing. That was good. What's the secret? Okay. Also, I, I think, if I may, I yes. think, I think what Casey said is really the secret is that is that it has to be grounded in reality. It has to be true. It has to come from a place. In terms of telling a story, you have to believe that these character uh, characters want something, need something, feel something, as opposed to coming out and just being, you know, shticky. So um, if that's if that's the foundation, then then you can kind of go from there and and do the funny and, and hopefully succeed. But I think if it's grounded in a truth, then... It always has to start with something yeah. real, like a real person, yeah. not yeah, just... Exactly. Yeah. I've created a little test for myself over the years that if you make a choice and nobody laughs, if you still have your dignity after that choice, if it was still moderately <laughs> truthful, then you're okay. Well, very important question, and I think that this is quite possibly the most important question one could ask about any Broadway musical. Oh my God. Are you ready? Oh, hold oh, on wow. to... Oh, there is I no edge. Know. I would say hold on to the edge of your chair, know. but you don't I'm have ready. edges. Nope. Is there tap dancing and will there be jazz hands? Yes, and yes, and yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's a lot of tap dancing. There's yeah. like five tap numbers in the show. Wow. I'm going to have to see the show 12 times. Yeah, it's, pretty, it. it's pretty fun. It's pretty fun. And um, segueing into our public television segment of the interview, if you watch public television, what are some of your favorite programs? Well, I certainly do. I love great yeah. performances. I'm, like everyone else, obsessed with Downton Abbey. Me too. So that's the one Sesame for me. Street. Oh. It never gets I have a 13-year-old daughter, and it just—I it, kind of—I kind of, you know, long for the days when you know you turn oh. it on, like, oh, that's that part is gone. But you know, yeah. it's it's never really gone, is it? Yeah, and it's, it's right here. <laughs> yes, Sesame on your coat. is always in your inner, exactly <laughs> on your lapel, on your lapel, <laughs> on my casual, casual coat. <laughs> and why would you say it is important for the lovely viewers out there to support public television? 
It's it's a uh, uh, the bedrock of of culture, you know, for for this country to be able to kind of have an option, an opportunity to go uh, where where you know the the kind of programming, the kind of uh, funding that is that is that supports this is coming from the people who watch it. Uh, it gives you variety. It gives you uh, it gives you an alternative. Um, to the the kind of uh, more traditional network uh, options, and it's um, I always find it to be um, uh, interesting and always satisfying to, to watch something on on public television because you know it's there's something there's a core to it that uh, is always attractive and is always really really fun to watch as well. Hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us today, Casey Nicola, thank you. Brian Darcy James, Christian Borrell from Something Rotten. Once again, this is Elisa Lichtenbach from Ticket Booth 13. All of you get V to the St. James Theater for nice. some tickets for Something Rotten. <laughs> <laughs>